Now, before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Node Maven for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for a proxy provider, I'd recommend checking out Node Maven. Unlike other providers, Node Maven uses an advanced filtering algorithm to screen IPs in real time before assigning them, ensuring you get best high quality addresses 95% of the time. With Node Maven's hybrid proxy technology, you're able to have longer session times and IPs that last up to 24 hours, many times the industry average. Some more features include accessing uh, five plus million premium residential IPs. You get the best with their filtering algorithm. Uh, you can go super sticky with the 24 hours IP sessions. You can do it all with the unlimited concurrent sessions. You can also use city-based targeting in 1400 plus cities across 150 plus countries. And you can also get expert level uh, of uh, support um, online. And it also has no major domain restrictions. You can use it for various things such as account management, data scraping, online shopping, SEO monitoring, and much, much more. Check out the links in the description below to get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and the new video. And if you don't already know, I've done a complete Java data algorithms bootcamp. So getting started with Java, all the Java concepts, object reprogramming, and all sorts of things. And recently, I also did a video on Java development. So we learned about uh, Spring Boot and uh, Ivan and Maven and uh, you know, build tools and uh, built a project using MySQL and some cloud services. So I leave the link to that in the description below. I highly recommend you to check it out. If you want to contribute to Java development or just get started with Java development, uh, you can check out that tutorial that I did complete tutorial with a hands-on project in the description below. This video is a follow-up on that. Like in that video, I got a lot of comments that you can check out that say, how do we get started with Java open source or some of the prerequisites? And the reason I'm making this video is my open source journey also started from Java. My first open source contribution and real world contributions were the Java open source uh, project, the Java Kubernetes Java client by Red Hat Middleware. So let's get started. I'm just going to drive straight into it. The first thing you need to learn is, uh, okay, how do we get started with open source projects? So I've done some videos on it already around uh, how to find open source projects and the best practices and all sorts of things. So you can check that out in the My Experiences playlist. But this video is specifically about Java open source. So point number one, learn Java. So Java core concepts, the syntax of Java, how to get started with Java, object programming, exception handling, the collections framework, you know, generics, uh, these are some of the things that are used heavily. Uh, Lambda expressions are there. Then there are stream APIs for processing data in a functional and concise manner. And also concurrency. So study like multi-threading programming and synchronization in Java. Um, you know, it's used to build a concurrent and multi-threaded application. So that's point number one. And my Java DSA playlist will help you with this. Now point number two. Java libraries and frameworks. So you can learn about the Java standard library, familiarize, familiarize yourself with the commonly used Java libraries for uh, input output, networking, and much, much more. Spring framework, for which I did a video already. You can check out the links in the description below for that. Spring framework, uh, in short, it's used for building enterprise level Java applications. You can learn about Hibernate for object relational mapping and database interactions. If you're interested in building desktop applications, you can learn about Java FX. And uh, you can also understand unit testing frameworks for writing and running tests in Java, JUnit, TestNG, so on and so forth. Also, I, I'd say a pro tip is that you can get started with testing if you're contributing to an open source project. I started with JUnit testing. So it's um, much less complicated than, you know, adding a new feature in a project. Right. That's point number two. Now, point number three about, about databases. So learn about database connectivity. So you can learn about how to connect Java applications to databases using the Java database connectivity. So G, so JDBC. And uh, you can explore like database management system, concepts, DVMS, uh, explore the database design and uh, SQL, for example, for creating and querying databases. That's point number three. Point number four very popular field a lot of options for you to contribute in open source here web development so you can learn about if the project is using it learn about java servlets and jsp java server pages 
for web application development i'd say don't just learn for the sake of learning it learn only if you get to apply it somewhere and uh, also you can learn about web frameworks like spring boot which i did a video already and uh, you can learn about restful apis and things like that also familiarize yourself familiarize fa familiarize yourself with html css javascript and uh, you know front end development a little bit okay that's point number 4 point number 5 now i'm telling you, you know in one by one step you know all sorts of things so after watching this video you will have a lot of points and a lot of action items kunal told us so many points now we can get started with it so i'm giving you as much pointers and action items as i can point number 5 build tools and dependency management very important so java open source projects that's how these are going to be built so many projects are going to use apache maven or gradle for managing java projects so you can use build tools like that and also understand how to learn how to handle dependency using tools like apache iv or the maven central repository if you want to learn more about this you can watch the spring boot tutorial i did i've used maven in that right Point number six, also very important, but really easy. I think this is the easiest part. Learn Git version control system. For this, I've done a video already, which has crossed a million views. More than enough for you to get started. Number seven, also easy. Uh, it's a integrated development environment, an IDE that you can use. For Java, IDEA, IntelliJ IDEA is a really popular one. You can also use VS Code, or you can also use uh, something like Eclipse, but I'd recommend IntelliJ IDEA, the free version you can try, the community version. All right, point number eight. I'm just going, I don't, I don't have, I don't know how many points I will tell you, so I'm just keep going. So learn about API design and learn about the documentation. So learn about how to design clean and efficient APIs because that's what you will be doing. And also how to document your code and APIs using tools like Java Doc and Swag. All right. Since you're, going to be, since you're going to be contributing to a real world open source project, you'll find yourself working with CI CD platforms. So, learn about CI CD, um, right? So, understand how to build, test, and deploy that entire process. That's pretty much about it. Uh, there's so many tools Circle CI, Jenkins, Jen, um, and um, Travis, GitHub Actions. So, a lot of tools you can try. That's point number nine. Point number 10, security. So because you're contributing to an open source project, it's important to learn about the Java security best practices, some of the common security vulnerabilities, authentication and authorization mechanisms. That's point number 10. Point number 11, design patterns. So when you're contributing to an open source project, they will have some design patterns in standard. So familiarize yourself with common design patterns. For example, like singleton, factory observer, and where you, where you can apply them in your code. Okay, um, point number 12, uh, performance optimization. So how to optimize your Java applications for better performance. I'd say learn about that. Point number 13 is unit testing and test driven development. Practice writing unit tests and consider adopting test driven development principles in your development workflow. Point number 14, this will help you in setting up your project and also scaling it. Um, so containerization and microservices, learn about Docker, orchestration with Kubernetes, and also the microservices architecture. So you can check out the links in the description. Like, just check out my DevOps Bootcamp playlist that will help you in that. Now, uh, some more real world use cases can be cloud services, so that can be point 15, how to deploy Java applications using some cloud providers, you can try that. You'll get stuck somewhere so point number 16 would be debugging and troubleshooting learn you know how to develop debugging skills to identify and fix issues in your code because if you make a pr you get stuck somewhere people will request changes so you should be able to replicate those changes um what else point 17 can be soft skills because you'll be contributing to open source so having good communication skills and collaboration skills is important Point number 18, um, certifications. Maybe you can go for some sort of Java certifications like the Oracle Certified Java Developer or the Spring certifications if you want to validate your skills. It's not mandatory. I don't have any certifications as such, but if you want, go for it. So just remember Java is you know, a very versatile language and 
learning path is going to depend on various type of like interest and your career goals or the type of project that you're going to be contributing to but uh, that was basically how you can get started with java development open source so i mentioned a lot of point more than 15 so as a part of the next video like as a part of this um, video to get the most value out of it i'd say google is your best friend so all the points i have mentioned google it you will find plenty of free learning opportunities and resources on youtube and documentation and blogs if you just google it so one by one research every point that i mentioned and you are going to be busy um yeah thanks a lot for watching if there's any specific video you want me to make you know just let me know that's the best way and uh, the way you can do that is by commenting on this video and if you have any questions you can comment as well and like share and subscribe i'll see you in the next one have a great day